Hi, my name is Alexander Smith, and I'm an application engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. Today, we're going to talk about how to get started in a SOLIDWORKS assembly. I'm going to be putting together this LEGO Man assembly using parts I've already created. I like to use this torso part as the base of my assembly, so I'll go to my file menu and select Make Assembly from Part. I'll select the template I want to use and create the assembly file. Now I'm tasked with inserting the part into my assembly file. By default, the graphics preview option is turned off. With it turned on, a preview of the part appears under my cursor in the graphics area. If I click in the graphics area, the part will be placed at the location of the graphics preview. Alternatively, it is best practice to place the part so that its origin matches up exactly with the origin of the assembly. To achieve this, I can simply click OK in the property manager. Notice that I can't move the torso. That is because the first part inserted into an assembly file is automatically fixed in place to keep the assembly grounded. The next part I'd like to add is the Lego man's head. So I'll select Insert Components, browse to the file's location, select the head part file, and open it. To place the head into my assembly, I simply click in the graphics area. Now that I've inserted the new part into the assembly, I need to locate and constrain it using mates, so I'll activate the mate tool. The head requires both a concentric and a coincident mate. For the concentric mate, I'll select the outer cylindrical face on the top of the torso and the inner cylindrical face of the hole in the head. Then, using the pop-up dialog, we can see SOLIDWORKS has selected a concentric mate, so I'll hit the green checkmark to confirm it. For the coincident mate, I'll select the planar face on the top of the torso, as well as the planar face on the bottom of the head. Once again, SOLIDWORKS has correctly assumed we want a coincident mate, so I'll confirm it. That's all the mates we require for the head, so I'll insert the next part file, which is the LEGO man's hips. The hips require three mates in total. The first is a coincident mate between the rectangular top face of the hips and the bottom face of the torso. With my next mate, I'd like to locate the hips centrally relative to the sides of the torso. This can be done using an advanced mate called the width mate using the centered constraint. Applying the mate is easy. I just select the two side faces of the torso and the two side faces of the hips, and it centers the hips within the width of the torso. I'll use another width centered mate, selecting the front and back faces of both the torso and the hips, to locate the hips centrally relative to the front and back of the torso. That's the hips finished, so I'll add the next part file, which will be one of the Lego man's legs. The leg part file has two configurations one for the left side and one for the right. I'll select and insert the left leg first. To locate the left leg, I'll make the hole in the leg concentric to the post on the hip, and I'll make the small lip on the end of the hip's post coincident to the inner planar face on the inside of the leg. And that's all I need to do for the left leg. Now, instead of inserting another part file for the right leg, I can simply create another instance of the leg part by holding control and clicking and dragging the leg in the graphics area. Then, to change the new leg's configuration, I'll click on the leg and select the right configuration from the list at the top of the context toolbar and click the green check mark to confirm the change. Next, I'll add the concentric mate between the hole in the right leg and the post on the hips. And then, for the coincident mate, I can press Alt to temporarily hide the two faces under my cursor. Now I'm able to select the inside face through the hidden faces without rotating my view. Finally, I'll select the face of the lip to finish the coincident mate. The next part I'll add is the Lego man's left arm. For the two mates, I'm going to use a shortcut that bypasses the mate tool entirely. To add the concentric mate, 
I hold Control and select the two cylindrical faces I'd like to mate together and select the concentric mate type from the pop-up dialog. Similarly, for the coincident mate, I'll pull the arm out so I can see the faces, hold Control, and select the inside edge of the hole in the torso and the inner face on the arm, and select a coincident mate from the pop-up dialog. Now, I'll insert the Lego man's left hand and made it to his left arm using the pop-up dialog to add both a coincident and a concentric mate. To create the right arm, I'll copy the existing left arm in the assembly and change it to the right configuration. To speed up the mating process, I'll use a special smart mate that will insert both a coincident and concentric mate in a single operation, called a peg and hole smart mate. To do this, I simply hold Alt, click on the edge of the arm I'd like to make coincident, and drag it onto the inner edge of the hole in the torso. And just like that, I've added both a coincident and a concentric mate at the same time. The last part needed for this Lego Man assembly is the right hand, so I'll copy the existing hand part and use a peg and hole smart mate to mate it to the right arm. The last thing I'll do is give this assembly a name and save it, and I'm all done with this Lego Man assembly. In today's video, we covered how to get started in a SolidWorks assembly, covering how to insert components, as well as multiple methods for inserting different types of mates. You now have the required knowledge to start up an assembly of your own with ease. Thanks for watching.